I'm Nate Eaton, and here in our studio is Wendy Norman. She is a Democrat running for House Congressional District Seat 2 here in Eastern Idaho. That is Congressman Mike's, Mike Simpson's seat. He has been in that seat for quite a while, several terms, and she is hoping that uh, she will be able to unseat him at the election in a few weeks. Wendy, thank you for coming in to chat with me. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Let's start with a little bit of background on who you are and why you decided to run. Okay. I am a first grade teacher from Rigby, Idaho. I uh, started teaching in 1994 when I graduated from Utah State University. And um, I started teaching high school and then I went to middle school and now I'm in first grade and some people say that that's the right trajectory for <laughs> getting to Congress. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of fun to, to do this, but um, I've always been greatly interested in, in media. I have a journalism associate's degree and read a bunch of what's going on in the world and was deeply concerned about the idea of Mike Simpson being defeated in the primary by somebody who I think should never, never hold power in government. So um, when I was invited to run for office, this is the one that they suggested that I run for. And having no clue what I was doing, mm -hmm. I, I agreed to do it. And you know, this has been frightening to start with, but I'm not even really scared anymore. You know, to say that I'm a Democrat in Idaho, a one-party state isn't healthy. We really need to have a balanced state where the compromise doesn't come between the far right and the right, but that we actually have a reasonable Democrat presence as well to help start pulling that, the policies and things over more towards the center. And that's why you decided to run? A good portion of it, yeah. <laughs> so why are you a Democrat? To me, as I have watched what's been going on, especially in the last, the last presidential election and the one, well, 2016, I felt that somebody was elected who should never have the power of the United States government in his hands. As president? Yes. And I watched as the fight between left and right, the hatred, the demonizing of people, how somehow teachers became the enemy, how um, medical providers became the enemy, how scientists are the enemy. And I thought, that is not what America is supposed to be. United States of America means that we have all the people and recognize the value of all the people and not try to say liberals are evil or they're socialists or Republicans are evil and they're fascist, which is, there's a lot of that going around. And so to run for this office, I did have to declare as a Democrat. At, up till then, I wasn't. I was. Um, and affiliated because of the, um, the desire to be a part of the primaries. And then, of course, we know that that changed as well. You couldn't even do it as an unaffiliated voter. You had to declare as a Republican. I, re I declared as a Republican a couple of years ago. And for this, I'm now officially a Democrat. But I think it's a not a bad place. It's been, as I've traveled across the state and I've been meeting people, I just... I wish everyone had that opportunity and that they weren't so scared of the Democrats title, the label, because I have met fantastic, good people that they're not that far away from where Republicans are. I come from a family of very, very conservative people and my poor mother, <laughs> you know, um, but I do believe we need it. We need all people represented. And there are a lot of people in the state right now who don't feel like they have representation. The top issue for most voters is the economy mm -hmm. and inflation. Right. If you are elected, what is your proposal on how to fix that or at least contain it or stabilize it? You know, I hear that all the time. And I'm really concerned about the idea of people calling it Bidenomics and blaming it strictly on our president. Every nation on earth is dealing with inflation. 
and the inflation is still a result of COVID. My husband's work situation, it, that's what they, they still can't get all the things in for electricians. Um, and his brother works in a place, the same thing. They cannot get all the supplies they need for, for building things. So we still need to do um, some of the things that Biden has done in trying to bring back some of those um, companies to make the necessary materials to be able to open up those supply chains. So like the Micron, the CHIPS Act, where they were able to then get some of that funding. So we're not sending it, getting it all from China and we're gonna be able to make it right here in Idaho. Those are the kinds of things that I think we need to be doing more of. Not only does it protect us when there is a global crisis of some kind, it also brings jobs home. Of course, we know that that's not a huge issue right now. There are lots of jobs. But that is going to be a common issue at, again, and we need to just make sure that it's Americans doing as much as we can. I don't feel like we're that far. I, I do. I feel really bad. My own pocketbook is hurt by the inflation. But I think we're doing what we need to do um, to bring that back under control. Um, I'm worried about the talk that they're saying, you know, recession coming. There's a pretty good chance. There's a pretty good chance. Cyclically, we always end up with recessions. It doesn't sound like it's going to be a deep, dark one, but sometimes things go hard, and sometimes we just have to keep going, keep plodding through until we get to where we need to be, where things are going to work out again. What are your thoughts on the war between Ukraine and Russia? Should America be doing more? Or have we done enough? Should we pull back? I feel like we're kind of on the right track. I, I guess I grew up in the 80s, and in the 80s we were, we were required to read The Last Babylon in school, which was about the idea of a nuclear war between Russia and the United States, and what it would be like afterwards. And so I grew up with a healthy um, concern about Russia. And then we had Gorbachev and we had um, Yeltsin and things seemed like things were going well. But we have someone in charge in Russia right now who wants the old USSR back. He's not going to stop with Ukraine. I do not want to dedicate soldiers on the floor, on the ground to fight. But I think what we're doing is working, and Ukraine is being so amazing. What are your views on abortion? I don't like that issue. When I decided to step into this, that was one I just figured I would never even talk about. I thought um, Roe v. Wade was there, and it wasn't something to worry about, other than I believe those are lives as well. I strongly believe. And I love children. That's my whole life focus. What has happened is so terrible for people. And people don't realize that yet. It's not going to be until moms start dying that we start to realize why we need some abortion. There is a legislator who's running for office in the Panhandle, northern Idaho, who wants no exceptions for anything. And that women should embrace the idea that they, can, they just should embrace sacrificing. It's not a sacrifice. Sacrificing somebody else is not what this nation is about. If a woman needs an abortion because of her health, she needs that abortion. If a woman is raped, if a little kid was raped, do we really want 10-year-olds? I taught in a school where we had a 10-year-old who was pregnant. Do we really want that child to carry that baby and cause the damage that a pregnancy can do to her body? One of the reasons I'm running here is because of the fact that there are very few black and white issues. Abortion should never be a, up until the day a healthy baby is born, it can be aborted. But there are times when abortion is needed. 
And I really hate the idea of having to call up your legislator and say, hey, we've got a situation here. Can we get permission for this woman to have the health care she needs to survive? That's too far. So let's find a way to balance it so that we save as many lives as we can. Truth is, what stops abortion is education, access to birth control, living minimum wages, mandatory um, maternity leave, maternity leave, paid maternity leave. I worked with a gal when I was doing some adult education. She had a baby on a Friday and had to be back to work cleaning hotel rooms on Monday. That is not pro-life. And that hurts my heart. And we need to stand up for these women. These aren't old women. These aren't often even, sometimes not even educated women. These women are in a situation that they're terrified. Some of them have abusive spouses or boyfriends. And we know that pregnancy is a very dangerous time in abusive families. So why don't we do something to solve those problems rather than just saying, nope, no abortion. No, let's solve those problems. Let's you mentioned them. a living wage. Do you believe there should be a federal minimum wage? Increase? Increase, Absolutely. yeah, yeah, from 725 or whatever it yes. is. Yes. How long ago was that, that we went to 725? It is not livable. It's not. We need to get those wages back up. And I, I hear people say, well, those jobs are for um, kids, for teenagers. Do you really think that the legislature got together and decided, you know what? I think we need to pay a minimum wage to teenagers. They didn't, did they? Minimum wages were meant for people to be able to provide for a family. And in the 50s and 60s, one salary could provide for a family. That's not even possible now, unless you've got the education. Um, but education is another issue where we have people going into debt for the rest of their lives. Do you, do you agree with the, uh, Biden's federal student loan forgiveness program? I have really mixed feelings about it. I think that it's going to help a lot of people who didn't finish their education but I don't think it addresses the real issues, which is the fact of how much costs of education have gone up. When I was in, you know, growing up in the 80s and working on my, my schooling, I could work in the summer and earn enough to be able to pay my tuition. That's not happening anymore. That doesn't happen. So if we really want to have educated or trained workforce, we need to do some more to support them. We need to quit backing off from funding and make sure that people can access it without it indebting them forever. What would you say you would do different than Congressman Simpson if you're elected? Maybe one or two things. If you're sent to Washington and representing us in Eastern Idaho. Right. You know, I've appreciated Mike Simpson. I hope it doesn't offend when I say that I feel like he's our, our one sane legislator. And I think he has been. But. The last several years, I think when he's gotten tired, I'm really disappointed he wouldn't debate me. And that's from someone who's never done a debate in my life. You know, I wish he would have debated me because I wanted to talk to him. I wanted to say, once again, we don't have to have all black and white issues. I will never be an A rating from the NRA. And I will tell you why. It's because I'm a teacher, and I was a teacher when Columbine happened, and I was teaching first graders when Sandy Hook happened, and all those little kids shot down just because guns are glorified for some reason. My daughter was a middle school student at Rigby Middle School, and you know what happened there. She was in the math, and so she heard those gunshots. And when the shooting happened in Texas, I had to tell her because I was concerned of how she would react if she found out at school. The look on her face, the look on her face was terror on my 14-year-old daughter's face. And I kept her at my school that day just because I didn't have time to run her home. We don't have to have 
everybody with their own nuclear weapons. Hyperbole. But the reality is, why are we letting 15, 16, 17-year-olds, or 18-year-olds, 18-year-olds to buy their own weapon of mass destruction, a weapon that they can just squeeze a trigger a few times and kill dozens? Why? We need to find a balance. We don't need to take everyone's guns away. I would never do that. I enjoy shooting. I don't like killing things, but I do enjoy shooting. We don't have to do it all or nothing. So let's find some balance. And I want Mike Simpson to find that balance. Instead of bragging about his a rating from the NRA, he needs to help solve that problem. Solving that problem does not involve sending me into school armed. I'm not going to be able to do that. I cannot teach first graders and have guns in my possession at the time. That's not, a, that's not the answer. So let's find some answers that really will make a difference and save real lives. So that's one big thing I would do differently. The other thing is, is um, health care. I know that Simpson was very opposed to the Affordable Care Act. I think we've found that that's not a bad thing, that it's doing a lot of good. It's getting people health care coverage. But it's not gone far enough. And Mike Simpson, he won't vote for even lowering prescription drug prices for diabetics. You know, the Insulin Reduction Act. Why? And actually, I don't even like that law very much that because I feel like we need wholesale pr changes in our health care. Mm -hmm. um, and Simpson's not going to do that. I just, we had a family tragedy a few years ago where my, my sister died on Christmas Day. Mm. And my mom had tried to talk to her and to go to the doctor, and she wouldn't because she couldn't afford it. We don't know, you know, maybe she would have died anyway. But no American should be dying because they can't afford health care. None. There's no reason for it. Every other civilized nation has a for one form or another of universal health care. They're not even the same. So let's find our solution and let's make it so that everyone can get the health care they need. That's what I would work towards as well. Well, those are both big issues that a lot of people care about. So thank you very much, Wendy Norman, for coming in. Again, she is running as a Democrat against Congressman Mike Sim Simpson for House District 2. Election Day is November 8th. And you can find more about Ms. Norman on her website. Uh, we'll put a link down below and you can check it out along with uh, some of her beliefs. I'm assuming you're on social media as well. I am. So you can check out those pages. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for letting me come in.